All right, I'm super happy uh, this afternoon to be speaking to Sergei Kisilev. He is VP Europe for Zero Avia. That's the company based in Cranfield, I believe, in the UK, that are currently pushing the envelope with regards to hydrogen aircraft. Welcome, Sergey. Uh, exactly. Thank you, Pete. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Exactly. We are located. Uh, um, I am located in uh, Cranfield uh, in the UK, uh, but the company is um, actually uh, both UK and US based. It was uh, founded about uh, three and a half years ago in Hollister in California. Okay. And about two years ago, we moved uh, to, to the UK on the on the back of uh, uh, the government grant, uh, which was uh, which uh, funded uh, our hydrogen development uh, here in the UK, uh, which uh, culminated in, uh, in our first uh, flight uh, in uh, September last year on uh, hydrogen fuel cell. Yeah, congratulations for that. Uh, we were all within the aviation uh, world watching stuff like this with our eyes wide open and ready for the next step. So thanks for all that effort. Now, Cranfield is pretty interesting for us and also Hollister because uh, Cranfield used to be a skydiving center that uh, I visited back in the 80s and 90s. I don't know if you're aware of that. No, no, I'm, yeah. I'm not, but uh, <laughs> yeah. good to know. <laughs> so we have a little link there. Nice. Um, so the reason for this interview is I'm really keen to see aviation survive into the future, especially my side of it. I mean, obviously, there's the commercial side that you guys have some long term plans and we'll maybe get into that in a second. But um, I feel like a, a future without skydiving or sporting aviation would be rather dull. Uh, and so that's why I'm very excited to see and report on existing initiatives that are out there. Um, 2023 is coming close, and I know you guys have a plan for a, a commercial 10 to 20 place aircraft. How are the plans coming along? Yeah, uh, plans are pretty uh, coming along pretty pretty good. Uh, in general, uh, we started um, uh, our 19 seat program uh, at the end of last year, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we are building uh, uh, quite aggressively the team uh, the team of engineers, uh, and uh, you know we. Uh, uh, we are getting uh, the aircraft um, um, uh, moved to to, uh, to our new facility in Campbell in the next uh, uh, month or so, the 19 seat aircraft. And uh, uh, we um, understand uh, a lot of uh, challenges in terms of the design and then the certification of this uh, of this powertrain. And um, it's uh, it it seems to be uh, under control for the time being, you know. But uh, and uh, we'll try to keep it that way. Oh, good luck. And is it a very different powertrain to the Malibu powertrain that you currently have? Yes, it's uh, it's going to be quite different. And uh, first of all, it will be scale up. Mm -hmm. So from uh, from uh, 250 kilowatt uh, to about uh, 600 kilowatt. But uh, also the components uh, which will go into this uh, uh, into the end product will be considerably different. And in terms of uh, okay. first of all. Uh, um, um, the suitability uh, for the aviation. Yes. So, uh, because we need to go through a, a very robust uh, process of um, uh, certification with the civil aviation authorities uh, first here in the UK, and then uh, of course doing uh, doing the same parallel paths with uh, with other uh, civil aviation authorities like FAA and ESA. I'm sure, I'm sure. And, and I'd, I'd like to just take a little departure from that because thank you for explaining where the company's going and with the, the, the upscaling. But I'm going to ask you some questions about um, hydrogen aviation in general that um, I asked some of my colleagues and other skydivers uh, and uh, some of them are pilots and I've got some questions for you. So um, first, I guess first off, it's not even about the flying side, is the hydrogen, is the plan to have green hydrogen? So uh, the whole reason why we started this is uh, to use uh, uh, green hydrogen in uh, in our powertrain, and uh, uh, this is um, uh, this is looking good uh, in terms of uh, uh, a our ability to provide green hydrogen, but uh, also uh, in terms of uh, uh, the accessibility of uh, the equipment, uh, but also the uh, cost progression. In terms of uh, you know how much does it cost to uh, to buy the equipment and produce uh, uh, produce green hydrogen, and uh, there there can be two two paths to use hydro, uh, green hydrogen. First is to 
produce it at scale somewhere and then uh, transport it to the airport. But uh, uh, also the more attractive way is uh, uh, to produce it uh, locally at the airport. And this is exactly what we are doing at uh, Cranfield Airport. That, that is music to my ears, Sergei, because that was my very next question. Are we going for locally produced? Because that seems to be the most logical thing. And, and that's something I think we can scale to skydiving quite well, because we are generally in quite an agricultural rich area. So we have space uh, to do that. With aviation, of course, your uh, certification and standards are very high. I had some questions from the operational side uh, with regards to ground storage, refueling, management of hydrogen um, as far as danger, et cetera. In a nutshell, there will be um, uh, a compressed gas storage, you know, to which uh, we would uh, uh, connect uh, uh, our mobile truck. Mobile truck will be uh, uh, fueled up um, or filled up from that, uh, from that storage. And then uh, the truck would go to the, to the aircraft. And, uh, um, you know, similar to what you, uh, you use today, except for, you know, there will be gas as hydrogen going through uh, through the pipes right. but uh, it is uh, it is similar technology which we are using um, now for example we are driving toyota mirai which is uh, also the fuel cell mm -hmm. uh, passenger car so you just basically come to our truck and connect uh, toyota mirai and you have a, a, a almost exactly the same experience as uh, at the fuel pump uh, okay. at the gas station all right, so I can, uh, the fears that we have about dealing with hydrogen, uh, that they're, they're not necessary to worry about as far as you're concerned. Uh, as, uh, especially uh, the, the fuel in part, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, hydrogen is a very light molecule. So even if there is um, a certain leak, it's of uh, hydrogen, it just goes up in the air. Okay. So, uh, and, and therefore uh, it's, um, um, it, it's con considerably, safer in certain aspects than uh, the, 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 uh, the traditional fuel, mm -hmm. just because uh, it's, uh, it doesn't get accumulated uh, on the surface. Uh, it doesn't have uh, uh, the, the same conditions for the ignition. And uh, even if it ignites, it doesn't have as much radiative heating and it doesn't propagate as much. So in that sense, it's uh, uh, quite, uh, quite a bit safer. In comparison to um, a jet fuel aircraft or the current, for, say for example, the, the electric motor that Magni X is producing, uh, how comparable is your, your motor? So uh, the idea is that uh, we are uh, building the powertrain, which is basically one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence to the stock engine. Okay. okay, perfect. So for example, Piper has about um, 300 horsepower uh, engine or 200, uh, about 250 kilowatt. So we are building exactly the same uh, uh, mm -hmm. parallels. So Dornier 228, uh, which is our first uh, uh, 19 seat uh, aircraft, it has a maximum power uh, requirement of uh, uh, 533 kilowatt and we are building the 600 kilowatt uh, um, powertrain. So it's basically one-to-one -one correspondence. And uh, we are doing this to simplify the certification uh, process because uh, the, the CIA uh, is, is, is requiring that uh, we at least uh, uh, match the uh, stock engine performance uh, for the aircraft so that we don't have to uh, certify the, uh, the aircraft itself as well. Right? Because of the airframe issues with extra power, et cetera. Totally clear, thank yeah. you. And is this something that you see could be retrofitted like what you've done to the Malibu or gonna do to the Dornier to other aircraft? Is that something you would be offering in the future, you think? Exactly, exactly. So we, uh, we are starting on the, uh, on the retrofitting path mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the reason why is because it's, uh, we, we will have much faster route to the market. If we go with uh, building a, you know, the new airframe, it will take another decade to just um, certify that, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I guess cost one thing, it's costing you a lot of money now, I'm sure a lot of investment at the start. Uh, do you have projection costs about uh, whether you think it can be comparable or less or more in the future? So in general, our uh, the, the replacement uh, or when you do the retrofit, uh, it will be slightly cheaper uh, than uh, putting the new engine, because as you know, uh, engines go through um, you know quite uh, regular replacement cycles, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the idea is that uh, when uh, when the stock engine is uh, is up for replacement or for the major retrofit, 
this is where uh, our powertrain can come into the play. Okay, and uh, the idea is that the price point will be uh, slightly cheaper than putting um, uh, a new engine. That's number one. But the important thing is that uh, during the operations uh, of our uh, our hydrogen electric powertrain, we will bring significant savings uh, in terms of the operational costs. And uh, those uh, will come from uh, a, uh, the uh, fuel costs because hydrogen is uh, uh, overall is cheaper um, uh, than uh, the, the, the traditional fuel, but also we are using in effect the electrical powertrain, right? So it's uh, electricity is produced in the fuel cell and then goes to electrical motor which, uh, which, which uh, you know, uh, uh, turns the, uh, the propeller uh, in, in case of malleable. So, and uh, uh, similar to the electrical vehicles, uh, we don't have very high temperatures, uh, you know, with, uh, in, in our power, powertrain. Mm -hmm. So we don't have this excess wear and tear, which uh, um, uh, actually brings significant savings uh, in terms of, uh, operating uh, the um, uh, electrical motor. Fantastic, that actually answers my next question about maintenance cycles. So reduce maintenance cycles, basically less, uh, less wear and tear. Yeah, less wear and tear, and we will increase uh, the, uh, the, the time between uh, uh, the overhauls. And my last question, unless you have anything to add is, you know, with skydiving, we run generally sorties of 20 minutes at a time and we're we're based at a one airfield. Is there any way do you think that uh, we can get a hydrogen aircraft into a skydiving operation sooner rather than later? I think it's, it depends on what are the requirements uh, from the certification standpoint for, the, you know, for these operations. I think that uh, yeah, in general, we will not be allowed to, um, uh, to, to carry any passengers until we actually certify uh, the, the, the powertrain. And, uh, but uh, the, the, the skydiving operations are actually ideally suited for that. So you can have the local uh, hydrogen uh, production and uh, you will have this uh, short missions. Uh, just uh, to, to give you a perspective, uh, uh, currently with uh, about uh, 100 uh, kilos of hydrogen, uh, we can achieve the missions of about 300 nautical miles. So basically, you can um, you can operate uh, the whole day on uh, on basically one intake of hydrogen, right? For um, for your purposes, okay. And then come back to the same place. And uh, refueling time is very similar to what uh, you would expect from the um, from the uh, whatever F gas jet fuel. So it's about uh, you know twenty minutes to an, to half an hour, uh, and uh, and off you go for another three hundred nautical miles. Fantastic. So you've answered my question. Yes, it's completely uh, possible to match the two up. Well, so okay. is there anything else you'd like to add? I think uh, we are at the beginning of, uh, of, of a wonderful journey and uh, um, the whole world is watching uh, us and uh, everybody else in, uh, in hydrogen um, uh, aviation. And, uh, you know, we are happy to be a part of this. So, you know, we are pushing the limits and it's, uh, it's very exciting. I agree. And that's why I wanted to make sure that we, we mentioned Zero Avia and the great work you're doing. So, again, thank you so much.